for now. Uh, okay, as uh, Christina mentioned, uh, I'm Alina Ritanko and uh, I'm a software uh, engineer in uh, SoftServe. Uh, I'm working as a DWBI engineer. Uh, it's my uh, third month uh, in at SoftServe and um, first presentation for this community, actually. Uh, overall, I have uh, more than four years of uh, experience in the uh, BI area. And in particular, I was working as an ETL developer. Uh, during this time, I was mainly working with a Microsoft stack. Uh, it is uh, integration services, uh, SQL uh, server database, uh, reporting services, and analysis services. And during the last times, uh, I am working uh, with uh, Azure. And uh, today, so that's why today I want to share with you some um, experience that I had uh, recently uh, when I had to build uh, automated uh, ETL uh, process for, uh, for my project. And uh, so let's get started with the presentation of uh, that project. So today I want to cover a few uh, main uh, things. So actually I will explain uh, what was a business uh, requirement for this uh, project. Uh, I will show you what uh, architecture was actually decided to build. Uh, um, mainly I will spend our time on uh, demo demoing our results and uh, we can then uh, discuss. Uh, uh, maybe you will have some um, uh, suggestions or advice uh, how uh, it was possible to maybe uh, make it better or improve. Uh, regarding the requirements, so first of all, uh, it should be, uh, had to be um, an uh, automated uh, ETL that uh, we could run this uh, ETL uh, either daily or weekly and uh, we can change uh, this uh, occurrence. Uh, then uh, uh, there were two, even three resources uh, as uh, Azure SQL databases in uh, different uh, locations. Uh, the target uh, was um, uh, on-premise FTP server uh, that was, it's actually important to know that uh, it was located in a private uh, network. So it wasn't just uh, really obvious to connect it from the uh, Azure Data Factory. And as a result, uh, it should be uh, CSV files with uh, defined uh, uh, structure. And uh, the last thing was to send uh, errors using uh, Azure uh, webhooks to the uh, customer site. Uh, regarding the architecture itself, so as I mentioned before, there were uh, three databases uh, that were as a source, and uh, in the middle, uh, it was created a, a data factory project. Uh, that used Azure Key Vault uh, as uh, storage for the keys, uh, Azure Monitor as um, alerting system, and uh, Azure Data Factory triggers as actually uh, job execution um, um, activity. And uh, as I mentioned before, since uh, it was a SFTP server in a private network, uh, we couldn't just directly connect from the Azure Data Factory to that SFTP server, so uh, we had to use uh, integration in time. It's a, a compute a software that uh, helped us to build this connection to the uh, on-prem uh, software. So for that purpose, uh, in order to be able to connect to it uh, during the execution uh, on the cloud, uh, there was used a virtual machine uh, where, which was connected to that uh, network and uh, installed integration runtime. I, I will show it uh, later on the demo how it works. And then we were able to uh, store that files uh, on the SFTP. So right now I will uh, switch to the demo. Uh, if you have any questions uh, for now, you can ask me and, or we can continue. Okay, so um, we decided to use uh, Microsoft Azure for that because uh, uh, 
a customer already had an uh, environment created uh, in Azure. So uh, it was an easy decision just to start doing it right here. And all the uh, resources uh, gave us a possibility to perform our uh, task right here. So uh, if you uh, are new to Azure, uh, so general structure is that uh, the higher level is a subscri subscription of uh, Azure that you can uh, assign to a user or your organization, and uh, then it goes a resource group. So uh, in general, resource group it's a logical container for uh, for your resources that you can uh, group uh, by uh, your own purpose. Uh, in a project, we used one resource group for uh, one uh, environment. So in this case, I have only one resource group uh, that I'm using for a dev uh, purposes. And uh, if I open this uh, resource group, I will see um, on the uh, right, uh, on the left side that uh, there are some uh, settings and uh, configurations for it. and. Uh, this um, resource group serves also as a uh, administering and management tools because uh, we can assign uh, some uh, permissions for exact users and uh, we can uh, track our cost uh, costs right here so it's uh, like one level of uh, management for uh, azure and uh, right here for the demo purposes i have uh, created a few uh, resources so uh, first is um, uh, SQL Server uh, database in Azure. Uh, it is a data factory itself, uh, Azure Key Vault service, and the storage where I actually put my files. Uh, so uh, since uh, I have no uh, uh, SFTP on premises, premises uh, I am using as a storage uh, uh, Azure Blob Storage uh, that is uh, a part of uh, Azure services. And uh, to show you how to work with uh, on-premises uh, resources, I am using uh, um, on-premises SQL uh, database. Uh, so the first resource uh, I would like to start with is uh, Key Vault. As I mentioned before, it's a storage for uh, the keys that I'm using on the project. So uh, how it looks actually, it uh, has um, I'm using right now uh, secrets as a storage for uh, keys. And uh, I have uh, uh, three uh, secrets. First is uh, connection string for on-premises uh, database. And if I go and open it, I will see that uh, secrets is actually a connection string uh, to the database. I can show it and you will see that It's connection string, and the same I had for uh, the other uh, resources. So uh, right now I will go to the uh, data factory and show you how. So uh, data factory it's an uh, ETL tool uh, on the cloud. So um, I can go to just uh, editing mode of uh, Azure Data Factory. And uh, I will see the starting page right here. Okay, uh, so uh, on the left side, I have uh, uh, four main uh, control panels. The first is editor, then monitor, and uh, um, manage. So I will start with the editor tab. Uh, so where I can see um, how uh, my uh, ETL is right now uh, looks like. So for the current moment, I have one pipeline and uh, four data sets. So first, 
before going deeply into this uh, ETL itself, I will go through the uh, connections that I'm using on this uh, uh, project. So first interesting thing is uh, integration runtime. Uh, as I have uh, uh, mentioned, it's uh, infrastructure that is uh, helping to connect uh, uh, to different uh, data sources. So there are two, two types of integration runtimes. First is auto-resolve and the second is self-hosted. So uh, auto-resolve integration runtime uh, help us to connect. For example, if I open uh, Azure uh, connection, it is using auto-resolve integration runtime since it is uh, uh, Azure uh, resource and it can uh, connect directly by using this uh, uh, automatic integration runtime. But if I have to connect, as I mentioned, to some uh, on-prem uh, resource, so then in that case, I will use self-hosted. And uh, how it is uh, uh, set up, uh, it is additional software that you should install on your machine. Uh, you can, if you click to the editor of this integration runtime, you will see that you are able just from uh, here to set up it. And using the key provided in the connection, you can connect to your uh, local uh, machine. It is uh, on the local machine. It looks like such window, which uh, says you that your self-hosted integration runtime is available to use. And in this case, uh, as I have a, a SQL Server installed on my machine, that's why I, I am able to connect to it from the Azure uh, database. So if I test the connection, I will see that my connection is uh, successful. Yeah, and if I change for auto resolve, uh, I will not be able to connect to from source. So it should fail. Okay, it failed because uh, it's not possible to connect. Uh, the other useful thing that uh, we have for Data Factory is its ability to integrate into the uh, Git. Uh, there are two options to integrate into Azure DevOps uh, Git or uh, GitHub. Uh, for demo purpose, I'm using uh, Azure DevOps Git that I have integrated all my changes. So. I will show you how it looks in the editor. Uh, on the top, I have uh, two options, uh, either to publish uh, my changes to the data factory server or to publish it uh, directly to the Azure DevOps Git. And uh, selecting the branch where we want to uh, publish. And also here, I can uh, have possibility to create a pull request if I want to merge uh, my changes. Uh, if I open, Git repository, it will look uh, the, the following way. Uh, so it will help uh, have um, templates that is actually a JSON file that is uh, describing uh, the structure of a uh, uh, resource. In my case, it is a data factory. And uh, I have a, a RM template parameters. So uh, later I will show you during the deployment uh, how to use uh, uh, those. Uh, JSON files and how to uh, parameterize them. Okay, uh, if we go back to um, Azure uh, Data Factory, I will see that uh, uh, I have already created uh, connections to all the sources that I have, but that's not it. Uh, I also need to create a data set for uh, each particular connection. In this case, I have uh, uh, two connections to the tables. The first is Azure SQL, the second is premises, and uh, two data files which I will create. And uh, my pipeline, uh, it's, it's really simple. It is just has uh, two copy data activities. First is uh, just uh, getting data from SQL and premises and put it in the storage, and the other the same, but from uh, Azure SQL. And the one thing I want to show you right here is that uh, if I click just on uh, demo of pipeline, 
I will see that I have a list of parameters that I, I can define right here. So uh, for a demo, I just wanted to show you how it is easy to uh, make your uh, pipeline uh, parameterized and uh, uh, easy to set up uh, your automatic uh, run. So I'm using uh, one parameter uh, where I set value uh, one or zero, uh, whether it is a daily run or not. So I will then show you how to, I implemented it in the uh, query. So if I go to first copy data activity, I will see that I have a uh, uh, first tab for sources where I, uh, used uh, okay that is how I uh, parameterize my query it's a, a simple example but it shows that uh, I can declare a variable and set uh, this uh, value to uh, the parameter that I have uh, uh, created before is a daily run parameter so i'm uh, checking if it is one that i will run one kind of query and if it is not i will run another one it's just a dump uh, uh, example but it shows how i can for example uh, add additional uh, conditions to there and uh, to run my um, query uh, by uh, using parameters and uh, that is uh, the query that is running uh, data from a SQL and premises database. And uh, here also selected the destination that is uh, filed. Okay, and uh, how I can also use this parameter is uh, uh, about triggers. Uh, trigger is a, a mechanism that uh, is able to uh, run pipeline by some schedule. And uh, right now I have uh, a prepared daily trigger uh, that will run uh, daily uh, this job and at, uh, at the same uh, exact period of time. And for each trigger, I can um, set up a parameter. So in this case, since it is a daily trigger, I am setting it parameter to one, uh, telling, this trigger that yes, I want to run it daily. And that's why uh, I can just add uh, different uh, parameters to this uh, triggers and uh, pipelines. So that is how it works. And uh, the last tab I want to show you is a monitor tab uh, where you will see a list of uh, uh, successful or unsuccessful run of your uh, pipeline since I didn't uh, uh, trigger it so I have nothing to here but zero but uh, if I will run it uh, you will see all the uh, runs right here with if there will be an error you will see it uh, here as well. Uh, that is all about the basic uh, of uh, data factory and uh, if you have questions for now for please ask but because I'm I want to go to uh, deployment the solution. Okay, uh, if no questions, so um, I would like to show uh, how we can uh, set up uh, deployment, uh, both manual and uh, uh, automatic. So as I mentioned before, uh, resource group uh, can be considered as uh, one of the environment and the uh, first I want to do is to create uh, additional uh, environment for uh, the test, for example. So I'm clicking to add new resource group. Uh, give it, it a name and uh, location. It doesn't matter which location because I'm not going to use it often, but um, you, you can create a resource group in some location and by default, this location will be applied to the resources that uh, you will create under it, but uh, 
uh, you have also opportunity to create uh, resources in different locations, not the same that the uh, resource group is uh, created. Okay, the resource group is created. And uh, it is empty right now. So first uh, that I want to do is to uh, deploy uh, Azure Key Vault. So uh, for Azure Key Vault, I will show you how to deploy it manually. And for Data Factory, I will deploy how, uh, how it can be deployed by using Azure DevOps Pipeline. So uh, to deploy a resource, I will uh, use a custom deploy deployment utility. Uh, as I mentioned before, each resource group, uh, it's a JSON file with its structure. And uh, one file is for um, describing the whole um, resource. So I will use it, for example, I will show it. This is a, a JSON file for Azure Key Vault. It has actually some uh, parameters right here. Also, it includes uh, all the settings that I have applied for the Azure Key Vault. It is access policy, all the secrets that I have created. It's all described right here. So it's a structure of it. And uh, additionally, I have a file for parameters. So I can uh, just parameterize this uh, deployment as I wish. So in this case, I have only one parameter. It's a uh, name of the Azure Key Vault. Since it is a test environment, I would like to test, uh, uh, to change the name to test. I'm uh, choosing the environment where I want to deploy it. And so deployment is in progress. Uh, the one interesting observation from my side is uh, when you want to deploy a uh, key vault, you don't have to uh, create, for example, an empty uh, key vault before and then uh, deploy some template. Uh, so you can just uh, deploy uh, Azure Key Vault uh, with no existing uh, key vault on your research. But uh, for um, Data Factory, uh, you should have uh, empty created, for example, uh, resource. And then you will be able to deploy because uh, if you don't have, have it created before, you will not be able to deploy. So when, once it is still in uh, deployment, uh, I can for now uh, to be able to deploy Azure Data Factory, create empty and deploy all the changes that I have on the environment to test. So I am setting up a name that I want to have for uh, data factory subscription, resource group, and the location. And I saw just a message that uh, my Azure Key Vault is already uh, deployed. So I will show it later. So I am creating a data factory project. <clears throat> okay, that's done. And if I go to the uh, test resource group, 
Uh, I will see that uh, I have uh, two resources already created. The factory is still on its way, but uh, Key Vault is already here and it is uh, uh, created for the test. I need, and I can do uh, the same for the data factory. I can just use a custom uh, deployment utility and deploy it using two templates, uh, but uh, I have prepared for this demo a pipeline for deploying it. So let's check if uh, data factory was created. Yeah, it's here and it's absolutely empty. Uh, so let's check it. So you will see that uh, there is no pipelines, no data sets, and uh, even no uh, connections. So, and right now I just want to show you how to uh, create. So um, in Azure uh, DevOps, uh, I have created um, a release pipeline for this purpose, where I want to uh, add task to move my uh, data factory project from uh, dev environment to test. What I have for this, uh, uh, first of all, I have artifacts is uh, a connection to a repository where I store all the templates for the data factory. And uh, I have one task right here. Okay, so I have a Y agent job. It's a deployment of IRM template. And in this case, uh, I have a, a few settings uh, to apply right here. So I am choosing uh, which resource group I want to deploy it, uh, which subscription. Uh, I want to create an update resource group. Uh, and you, will, you can see that here I am using a parameter and I will show you that um, in the library tab, I created for a testing environment uh, one variable group that have a environment and its value test. So I can do the same for the prod environment or some other if uh, needed. So if I go back then to releases, I will see that uh, I am uh, parameterized the resource group where I want to uh, deploy my uh, data factory template. So it is using parameter in the end of its name. Uh, a template I'm using a connection to the uh, Git repository and the same that we did manually for the Azure uh, Key Wall. First, I'm using which template I want to uh, deploy. So this will be uh, item template for data factory that I'm choosing here and uh, template parameters that's the same and I have here a file that uh, I have published from the uh, data factory and the one uh, thing that helps me to uh, make my deployment parameterized it's a, uh, a possibility to override template parameters so uh, what I'm doing here, so I have created a variables for this uh, test uh, deployment. So first I have is uh, name of the data factory since I want to change it depending on the environment and the name of the Azure Key Vault as it will be changed uh, from environment to environment. And uh, in this uh, option, I can just use uh, either uh, 
values from variables or I can set up my own uh, values that I want. So I have two variables, factory name and workable, and all the others are predefined. And uh, also right here, I can define um, a parameter value that uh, was set up for the pipeline run. It is a daily run that is set to one. And okay, that is it. And uh, if I want uh, to make a deployment, I will create a new release for that. Okay, it's the first release for now. And uh, I will click deploy. And uh, it should deploy all the changes that I had in the Git repository to the test uh, environment. Maybe any questions? Okay, deployment is in progress. Uh, also, we can uh, add uh, triggers that can uh, run this uh, deployment uh, or some other actions that will then trigger to make a release. So right now, uh, testing release is done and uh, we can change whether it is true or not. I will go to my <clears throat> data factory project test and if I reload the page, I should see that uh, all the uh, parts of uh, uh, data factory project uh, were created. Okay, so if you see all the uh, connections, pipelines were created and uh, the data sets. Uh, so uh, regarding demo, that's it. Uh, and uh, I will switch back to to my presentation. Okay, so to sum up uh, my presentation, so um, from my side, I would like to say that uh, Azure services are quite intuitive uh, in use and the good advantage of it is uh, its uh, scalability. So you can start from your uh, small project and then develop it to the just bigger ones. Uh, the other thing that when I started to work uh, on the project with uh, Azure, I uh, uh, didn't have previous uh, experience with that, but uh, there are actually a lot of free trainings and documentation that uh, was uh, really helpful for me. So I was able just to find anything I want uh, uh, for the other uh, resources. Um, also, if you will uh, try uh, Azure Data Factory, you will see that there's a bunch of different uh, data sources that you can connect your data to or use uh, your uh, data from. Then um, a good uh, possibility is to be able to connect to some on-premises uh, resources using integration runtime. It's quite an uh, easy uh, way to, to do it. As I uh, showed previously, we just uh, used a virtual machine as this intermediate level to connect to some uh, private ne network resources. And uh, of course, ability to uh, apply CI CD for uh, the project and uh, make it uh, uh, automated, uh, self uh, uh, integrated, and uh, it's like a very good uh, chance just to create end to end uh, solutions for your task. Also, I have included a few uh, useful links for this to look through. And uh, 
that's it from my side. So you are welcome to ask any questions if there are some. So I will be glad to answer.